We're continuing the fourth chapter of Ephesians tonight. We'll be dealing with the fourth verse, our 42nd installment in this book. I don't realize you probably know this, but it's good to go over it again, that the only person of scriptural record that refers to the church as the body of Christ is Paul. Nobody else refers to it in that way. So this was a special, uh, special revelation given to Paul, and he passed it on to us. The body of Christ, as elementary as it may seem, is comprised of many members. <coughs> And none of them, nor is any group of them, an island unto themselves. Yeah. Yeah. The modern church has done the best it can to create separate groups within the body of Christ. It's been very diligent in doing it, mm -hmm. but it's exposed itself yes. as not being real. Because it's working counter to God. That's right. I really didn't say that as strong as I want to say it. But I feel very strongly about this. The members of the body of Christ are not uh, grouped together by their gifts. That's, that's what man would do. This, this is exactly what man would do. He'd have all the eyes together and all the feet together and all ears together. Oh yeah, that's what they. Oh yes, that's what they do. Oh yes. Oh, matter of fact, they do it. Except they're not working with eyes and feet. This sort of thing. Now the apostles, is true, are unique. They were given things to see, but for you to know them, you've got to learn it from them. Amen. There are some things God will not show you. Yes. That they were to showed the apostles. You have to go to them to learn it. But they're still part of the body. Amen. He still set them in the body. They rank first. They're not given first place today. Mm -hmm. Some people have given first place to Solomon. That's what I thought when I, we first moved here. I'd never heard so many sermons on the book of Proverbs in all my life. I thought for a moment someone forgot how to spell Jesus. Still going on. Sounds real wise, but it's not. It's not at all. The strength of the brethren or the body of Christ does not consist in their uniqueness. Paul, Peter, you, whatever. That's, that's not the strength. The strength isn't in the uniqueness of an individual or a group of individuals. The strength is in the body itself. Amen. The body itself is what's strong. Now I can tell you right up front, if I know not a one of you know of a church of any significant size that is appropriately called a body. Your body is a body when you assemble. That's when it's a body. Everyone participates. But there, there isn't anything like this. If there is, it's the vast minority and off in the corner someplace. But Paul's going to talk about this. It's going to be very plain. The reason for this uh, arrangement is the nature of the kingdom of God, particularly as it regards edification, mm -hmm. it's building up or sending root down, depends on how you <laughs> how you look at it. And strengthening so that the sinews, spiritual sinews, people become strong and able to handle mm -hmm. difficult situations and pass through hard straits and survive temptation and this sort of thing strengthening 
exhorting, moving the people of us go, let's move now. Mm -hmm. Let's act upon what we've heard, what we've seen, and comfort. Because sometimes you get battle fatigue, yeah. and you, you need some comfort, mm -hmm. some yeah, anointing. Yeah. You know, anoint my head with oil. Sometimes, sometimes I feel like say, just anyone got any oil? You know. Yeah. <laughs> Anoint my head with oil. Bring some comfort. Now there's there's a sense in which some of this takes place in your direct fellowship with God through Christ. I understand that. But that really is is not where the bulk of it is. The bulk of it is accomplished to the members of the body, as the body comes together. I mean, this is how it's designed. This is how it's designed. It's designed so everybody gets something so they can share with one another. That, that's how it's designed. But you, if you didn't know this is in the Bible, there's no way you would arrive at this conclusion. You could graduate from a seminary with three or four doctorates, you would not know this. You could go through a Bible college, you'd never know this. You could sit Sunday after Sunday and class after class and sermon after sermon, and you'd never get the idea that God distributes things to the body and the body distributes to each other. You'd never. I don't know many place that does this. This is an assembly. The church isn't the body when it's distributed all over once yeah, during a week. Uh -huh. Who ever heard of a disassembled body in the first place? Mm -hmm. So body, that is assembly talk. That's what it is. That's, right. That's the primary means, the various members ministering to each other. Jesus ministers to the members, members minister to each other. Now, <laughs> All the members share a lot of things in common. If they don't share these things in common, they can't participate in the sharing. I mean, it's, it's got cut and dried. For instance, he has named some of them in Ephesians. We've all, we've all been given all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. That's for everybody. Everybody has access to that. We've all been chosen in Christ before the world began. All been adopted. All of them have gained an inheritance. We've obtained an inheritance. All have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. Every member has been quickened or raised from death and trespasses and sins. They've all been made to sit with Christ in heavenly places. This is the common things among all the people. They've all been reconciled to God. They've all been given access to God. They all are citizens of the household of God. They're all built on the foundation. However, we are being built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. He, God's too big really to dwell in any one of us. There's a sense in which he does, but it's a token, like a token He's building the church for a habitation for himself. It commences here, the inhabiting of God commences here. You remember Paul said to the Corinthians, they, they, they had a lot of spiritual gifts, but they were as dumb as oxes. They had people with the gift of knowledge and the gift of wisdom and the gift of prophecy, and they couldn't figure out a fornicator was among them. That's right, I'm telling you the truth. They had people deserting spirits and sort of thing, but they were rift with a division all among them. Got, got Jesus, Paul couldn't even talk to them like spiritual people. I got to talk to you like little babies, mama, dad, dad. That's I've got to talk like that because you're you're in terrible, terrible shape. So he told them. He said, "Now they were." Big evidently on speaking in different languages. It is kind of an attention-getting gift, you have to admit. 
So he said, now if a stranger come into your midst, this is 1 Corinthians 14, if a stranger come into your midst, one that doesn't believe, and you're all speaking in tongues, he's going to think you're nuts. And of course people do. <laughs> you're mad, what he said. That you're mad. But here comes this stranger. All of a sudden everybody starts prophesying, or speaking under the anointing of God. And unbeknownst to them, they're addressing some matters this stranger's mm -hmm. <laughs> dealing with. I'm sure they didn't know it themselves. But, but all of a sudden, this man's convicted. He falls on his face. Mm -hmm. And he says, God is in you. Yeah. It was his confession. Yeah. Not, in, not in Joe and Robert and yeah. Anita yeah. and Debbie and yeah. G. In you, plural. Yeah. That's right. God's here. Uh -huh. Because this man or whoever it was that he's posing knew that nobody knew what they knew. Now that's how God works in the body. Amen. Yeah. It's not always a convicting ministry. Sometimes it's a comforting one. It's like, it's like you come and it's like you say, somebody must have told a brethren what I needed. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, nobody did here. Uh -huh. That's the body, see, working together. Now, God can dwell in us only to the degree we're united. I'm going to say that again because this is the truth. This is kind of a profound. God can dwell in us only to the degree that we're united. There's divisions. God goes home. Now, this is just the way it is. I'm just telling you the way it is. This is the way it is. If you want every joint supplying, there's got to be unity. I mean, not, not union, unity. You, you could take two cats and tie their tails together and throw them over a clothesline. You got union, but you sure don't have unity. So Paul now addresses this marvelous unity. He's going to tell you how it's, what makes it work. Why it's the way it is. It's a unity that comes from the Spirit, he's going to point out. Mm -hmm. All right, now, verse, is, verse 4 of chapter 4. There is, there is mm -hmm. one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called, and one hope of your calling. Mm -hmm. Now, we're... Uh, Talking about a building project now. This is something God's building now. Build it together for habitation of God with the Spirit. And this is the building, building process. He's going to tell you how it works. In this body of Christ, it's an amalgamation of two different kind of people. A people that had been introduced to God in their prior life, and the people that hadn't been introduced to God. Mm -hmm. One people were taught by God, mm -hmm. one people weren't taught by God. One people sought God, one people didn't seek God. One people had a law from God, one people didn't have a law from God. And yet these two bodies of people are merged yeah. together. Now that proves they were made new. Amen. <laughs> Took two differing, uh -huh. out of Christ, two differing bodies of people. Uh -huh. Suddenly they blend. Uh -huh. Why? Because they've been made new. They all have a common, uh -huh. common nature called newness of life. In the kingdom of God, personalities that formerly were at odds with one another are brought together in one. If they remain at odds, mm -hmm. they can't be brought together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If they think differently, fundamentally differently, like one focus on heaven, one focus on earth, you cannot blend these people together. Yeah. Amen. 
Now the modern church is doing really, making a valiant effort to try and do it. So they've got certain compromises they make to do it. They'll say, well, the ones that think this way can come at 8, and the ones that think this way can come at 10. That's why they do this. Some of these great big buildings have 60 people at the 8 o'clock service, 200 people at the 10 o'clock service, and the auditorium seats 400. You figure that out. You fag bearing out here on Route 44, if they had a one shift that worked eight hours a day and 20 people worked it, then another shift worked eight hours and 300 people worked it, the manager would have them in and say, folk, we gotta, we gotta talk this over. So something, something's wrong here. 20 people can't produce what 200 people can produce. Yeah, the car manufacturers know, everybody knows this but the church. They don't know this. They don't know a handful of people can't have an output that a lot of people can have. That's if they're in Christ. Mm -hmm. Understand they're in Christ. So this, uh, this essential change that God makes in man, born again, recreated, it's in order that they might be joined together as well as to him. It's like a triangle. You join together on earth, You've joined together with God, but the nature's got to be the same for that to be done. You've got to have the same heart. You've got to have the same mind. You've got to have the same priorities. But people down here have to hate their life yeah. in the earth That's right. and prefer life with God. And if that doesn't take place, there isn't unity, and it can't be unity, and God won't let it unite. He'll do just like the... Tower of Babel. Yeah, yeah. Won't let it unite. unite. Now, see, if man wants to have fellowship with man, some, somebody's got to make their nature the same. Or if man wants to have fellowship with God, he's got to have the same nature as God. Or we've also come into a company of angels, so there's got to be something you've got in common with the angels if you're going to have fellowship with angels. So in redemption, there's a change of nature. Now notice this text is there is, there is one body. That's not philosophical language. So philosophical languages say there should be one body. Yeah. Or they, it would say there ought to be, there ought to be one body. The ideal, the ideal is to have one body. That's how, that's how philosophy would state it. But the Holy Spirit says there is, there is one body. Now this is an aspect of the kingdom of God you want to get hold of, the is aspect, the is factor. Amen. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. <laughs> he, said, God. he is not oh God if there's a God. If you're out there, I hope you hear me. Is. Jesus is the Savior of the body. See, it's just a factual. The Spirit is truth. 1 John 5, 6. And faith is, <laughs> the is factor. There is. It's the reality of God and the things of God that brings the people together. It's what is that brings us together. <laughs> That's the way it works. This is, it sounds simple, but it, the religious environment doesn't lead a person to think like this. But the scriptures will, of course. Now, Paul will clearly affirmed that the oneness that exists among God's people is based on some single things that they all that is common among them, among them all. And here is the first one he names: there is, there is one body. Not there, there can be one body. There is. One body. Not we ought to have one body. There is. There's one body. There's one group of people God dwells in. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just one. Yeah. If you're part of it, then you just clap your hands and rejoice. So you're part of it. One body. 
In the book of Ephesians, the church is frequently referred to as the body. For instance, the body is Christ's means or the, of expression. He's the one, that's what he expresses himself through, mm -hmm. the body. Ephesians 1.22 says, He put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. The fullness of him that fills all in all. So if he's got something to pour out, where, does he, where do you suppose he pours it out? Into his body. Amen. That's where he puts it. It's the place where reconciliation takes place in the body. Where it happens. That he might reconcile both unto God in one body. By the cross. Having slain the enmity thereby. Ephesians 2.16. See this is an important truth. He's dealing with one body. This is the place where building up is done. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Ephesians 3.6. You say, well, can't we build can't we build ourselves up with the most holy faith? Yes. We're talking now about the thrust, the yep. emphasis, the stress. Mm -hmm. not, the, not just the fact that he can be built up. Mm -hmm. If he pours his fullness out in the body, then how can you, unless you're in some situation like John on yep. Patmos or something like this, unless you're in that kind of situation, how dare you try and get your resources by ignoring that body? Yep. Amen. Do you really think God will let that happen? After he's established that the body of Christ is the fullness of him that fills all in all. That's where he, do you really think you can stay at home and that God's going to give it all to you anyway? It's just an imagination. Unless you lay bed fast or something, then you probably have to have a member of the body come there anyway. Amen. So it's a place of building up. It's a place where unity is realized. From whom the whole body fitly joined together, that's unity, uh -huh. fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies. Yeah. That's the thing that unites us. Mm -hmm. It's what you give out mm -hmm. that unites you. Yeah. In other words, as it flows out from you, the other brother's a vessel flows into him. That's right. And then you're, you're united mm -hmm. because of that. And it's a place where salvation is confirmed. Mm -hmm. Christ is a savior of the body. Mm -hmm. It's a place where participation takes place. We are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. So you, that's where you participate in Christ. Mm -hmm. There. It's a place where differences are legitimatized. Where many members in one body and all members have not the same office. Mm -hmm. So there's some differences, but they're legitimate differences because the differences are pipelines to one another, yeah. to final, final things to one another that you couldn't get on your own you, unless you were in some unique circumstance. Yeah. Yeah. This, is the, this is the norm now we're talking about, the standard. So we be many are one body in Christ and every one members one of another. So we're, you, we're tied to God, but we're tied to one another too. Amen. It's also a place of unity and diversity. Whereas the body is one and hath many members, all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. So, I mean, you... In fact, you have to have diversity to have unity. If you, yeah. Unity presumes diversity. Yeah. Amen. If you're going to have a car, it's assumed there's a lot of different kind of things mm -hmm. that comprise that car, that automobile, or even if you bake a cake, yeah. Yeah. there's a number of things that have to be put together to make that. Mm -hmm. So unity demands diversity. Mm -hmm. That's why unity is from above. See, otherwise men couldn't figure out yeah. what are the uniting factors. See, people couldn't figure that out. They're really given they, some assemblies, they say, well, we know how to figure it out. We'll make everyone be the same. <laughs> yeah. They'll have them all wear the same clothes and yeah. have the same haircuts, and, and that'll make us united. Yeah, we will all be dumb together. <laughs> yeah. Really I was also thinking about it in simple terms like a puzzle. 
that uh, uh -huh. if all the pieces of the puzzle were just cut straight edge and they just bumped <laughs> up to one another, then it wouldn't be held together. That's right. That's right. But whenever that's right. one has a lacking portion, yeah, then the is. other has been made to fit into that Amen. spot so that mm -hmm. the two can be joined and interlocked that's together. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Amen. Yes. I have actually heard several people throughout my life say things such as like, well, I don't really need to like, you know, gather with the breath with like other brothers and sisters. I just, you know, if I'm at home I read my Bible, God will just show it to me, but I don't think any part of the body is really designed to survive on its own. No, it's like a branch surviving without the tree. Yeah. See the only there are exceptions, but there are exceptions, you know. And I will tell you something else, that if you're someone isolated, you'll get something special. Yeah. If you take John, like he didn't he didn't have a brief review of Matthew. <laughs> he was given something intended to be passed on to the rest yeah. of the body. Yeah. Paul was given to see things other people didn't see. It wasn't just for him, it was to be passed on to the rest yes. of the body. So if a person is isolated, he should ex expect some unique thing to be given to him. Yes. It was God that isolated him. Yes, right. <laughs> because even he himself said, I am your fellow laborer, fellow That's partaker. right. Amen. Yeah, Brother Jonathan? Well, also, when you're talking about like different members of the body, um, each part, it's really effective when it's with the body. Like mm -hmm. even your physical body, like you take like your thumb, like that by itself does nothing, but when it's attached to the hand, now it's effective. Mm -hmm. So even like the most smallest part, or even the greatest part, it has to be attached to the body before it can really function. Amen. Mr. Logan? Yeah, in the beginning, when he told God told Adam and Eve, he told them to multiply. Same thing with Noah. It's because God wasn't going to pour his whole salvation yeah. working out in just two people, or even eight people. He wanted the whole earth yeah. to be full. He's going to work it all out in many people. Good. Who are Brother Paul? Even when someone is in isolation, they receive something. There's still the expectation to to share that with others. That's right. To send it forth. That's right. It's not something that's meant to kept, be kept to yourself. Yeah, you, the isolation is to get, mm -hmm. not to keep. Amen. <laughs> yes, it's a time of isolation is not meant to be a permanent yes. situation either. Mm -hmm. Anytime a limb or something is separated. It's it's kept alive for the purpose yeah. of being reattached. Yeah, you, we know this is the case because of what the end. Mm -hmm. We're all going to be together. That's right. In the end, so that whatever happens here has to reflect that uh, that purpose. And it's the part the play the body. This is where Christ's headship is realized. He's the head of the body, the church. Mm -hmm. uh, he's he's. He's ahead of each one of them. I mean, I understand that. And then there's a sense of which is ahead of everything in the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But in this salvational sense, he's the head of the body. Mm -hmm. And that's where he uh, ministers. And it's the place into which we've been called. Mm -hmm. Colossians 3.15 says, Ye are called in one body. Mm -hmm. so here's the body, you're called yeah, yeah. into it. And there's only one of these. Mm -hmm. One body. The expression one body, one body, referring to the church, is found ten times in Scripture. The words one body. See, so it's an important, important thing to see. The fact there's only one body underscores the fact that it's not divided. See, it's, it's one body, but it's not divided. Then it ceased to be a body. It's not a body. Even, even some of these gruesome uh, murders that take place, they cut up the bodies, and it was not a. There's not a body anymore. Mm -hmm. When it's dissected, it's not a body anymore. Okay. Men may be divided, mm -hmm. but the body isn't. Amen. Is Christ divided? Paul said. Well, of course, no. No, Christ's not divided. Mm -hmm. Corinth was divided. Mm -hmm. Not as the body, they weren't divided. They were divided. As men, they were walking as men, and men have divisions. Babylon the Great has introduced a non body concept of the church, and it sold the world on it. Hook, line, and sinker, they brought into it. There's not a Bible college or a seminary in the world that's founded on the body concept. 
Not a one. Not a one. So they've pretty well destroyed this idea. But this idea, this is God's. This is what God is doing. This is what God is doing. Growth takes place in the body. And if you tamper with this, growth will not happen. God will not let it happen. God will not let people grow up into Christ in isolation from the body. And if you don't believe that's true, do a little research. You'll find out it hasn't taken place. It's just that we don't have men of wisdom that know why this, these conditions exist. They don't know why the church is in the shape of sin. Every honest spiritual person, every man of integrity that's a minister or teacher knows something's wrong with the modern church. They all know it. Nobody denies it. Nobody says it's ideal. It has any element of discernment. But we don't have many people who are able to diagnose why it's this way. That's what the problem is. Yes. Well, you can correct me on this if I'm not clear. But when Jesus said that any branch in me that bears not fruit, it's cast forth as a branch into the fire. Would you say that the lack of fruit would be due to some kind of disconnection from the body? Or at least that would have something well, to do with that? If there's no fruit, if it's not cut off, it's going to be. That's what he said. It's any, it, he gives, God's not looking for a reason to condemn people. So he gives, he gives a due time for fruit to be produced. I think it's a lot shorter than most people, most people think. This is just my personal opinion. But I feel as though a person ought to be mature in it. The longest period of time would be three years. That'd be the, that'd be the most lengthy period. If not, un, unless they started out real young. If they're not mature after three years, there's a bottleneck somewhere. So some, something's wrong. Being like Ben, like Stephen and Philip, they weren't Christians very long, folk. Mm -hmm. Look what they did and said. Yeah. Even at the church, the person's not finished. You're not oh, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. The Apostle Paul learned things later. Peter yeah. learned things later. And they were stable. They were mature. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, sister. And I was thinking about uh, just like when me and Brother Tony was in Georgia, and we kept trying to find somebody to meet with. Well, we got some growth when we started reading, listening to the mm -hmm. MP3s. We started to grow, but nothing like whenever we came yeah. here. Yeah. I mean, if we would have stayed there, yeah. you know, at, especially after we saw the body together, we would not have grown. See, there's the body of Christ consists of all the members, even the bones that have gone on. That's right. So I can remember when I realized the condition that I was facing, I determined I'm not going to read a book that's not at least a hundred years old. It doesn't mean none have been written, but I didn't have time to do a bunch of research. I had my soul had to be fed. Mm -hmm. So I went to some of the members yeah. of the body yeah. that <laughs> had passed on before and they, that was that was what rekindled my spirit. Yes. Amen. That's what this see we're talking big things here. And it can go all the way down to the writers of Scripture, from them on up to anybody that's lived in the world that knew, that knew Christ and communicated the truth, and their, their writings do have access to them. That's part of the body. Yeah, right. And you can, you can profit, mm -hmm. profit from it. Because everything they receive, they receive to dispense. Yeah. See? So there is one body. So if you've ever wondered, is there really just one? Yes, there's just one body. Yeah. There are some places that aren't bodies. Mm -hmm. It's the truth. <coughs> one body. There is one spirit. Some versions read there is the same spirit. I, I don't care for that. It's a living Bible. That accents the people rather than the spirit. There is one Spirit of God. The Message Bible now, it, this is how it followed the verse up. You were all called to travel on the same road and in the same direction to stay together both outwardly and inwardly. It, it, the word Bible's on that book. 
Well, it is. I'm telling you the truth. Yep. That's, that's, that's sold as a Bible. Uh -huh. It's not a Bible. Uh -huh. It's a commentary. That's, right. that's terrible. That's not what the verse says at all. Uh -huh. One spirit. Hmm. Now, the spirit, this is an animating spirit. Yeah. Now, if you understand about creation... You understand that the body, as James said, without the spirit is dead. Yes. Uh -huh. So everybody, whether it's this body mm -hmm. or Christ's body, yeah. has to have a spirit yes, that's right. <laughs> that animates it, that moves it along. A body of professed believers without the Holy Spirit is dead. Amen. Amen. Period. Yeah. This is the condition the church in Sardis was in. So Jesus assessed them. He said, you have a name that you're alive, but you're dead. Why were they dead? Because they didn't do this, they didn't do this. Maybe they didn't have a praise service or a praise leader or a youth leader. Or... They didn't have the Holy Spirit wasn't in them. Mm -hmm. That's why they were dead. But even there, there were some, a few names, a few, a few names mm -hmm. that, uh, that weren't dead. I have a few, he said, even in Sardis. <laughs> what I, would you, do you want to, oh, God, be, God help us not to be the kind of fellowship that somebody, the God to say, now even there, I got a couple of folk, and you may not believe it, but even, even there, they have a name that they're dead. Now I said to this church, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Now the fact that they were ready to die doesn't mean that that contradicts you're dead. I gather it was something like going through the routine that if you had some understanding you you could have got something out of it, or these few names that were there. I gathered that the thing that was keeping the church with some death gasps mm -hmm. were these few, and when they left, it was just going to perish. Make no mistake about it, if they didn't turn around and said, strengthen the things that remain now, let's see. there's a couple of things you could get, there's a, there's a couple of bruised reeds here, and smoking flaxes, we could get this thing going again. But if you don't, mm -hmm. your time, your time's just about up. Yeah. I gather that if these few names left, that was it. It's, yeah. And there does come a time mm -hmm. when the disciples have to leave the synagogue yeah, in Ephesus. Amen. Paul took them, took them out. Let's go down here the road to School of Tyrannus. We got a little freer form there. We can speak a little more openly there. At that point, the thing had collapsed. See, the thing that's keeping a lot of churches alive is a handful of people. Yeah, that's right. mm -hmm. it, it doesn't sanctify the church. Because, mm -hmm. you see, it's, just, it's not working like a body. And, and Jesus did, gave himself. He's the Savior of the body. Yeah. Yeah. He's the Savior, I said, of the body. Yeah. So if the body's not functioning, Jesus didn't die for that kind of thing. Uh -huh. yeah. That's not what he purchased. Mm -hmm. That's not what he loved and gave himself for. He didn't love and give himself for an institution. Mm -hmm. He didn't do this. Yeah. He did it for the church, Amen. which is his body. There's only one spirit that can animate this body. Mm -hmm. Only one. One, there's one, one spirit. And if the spirit is not animating that body, it's not the body of Christ. You you can reason about it and think about it and and if and but and everything else. But if the Holy Spirit's not animating that group of people yeah. and this condition continues on, that is not the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. It is not a legitimate church. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's an imposter. Yeah, right. It's a blotch mm -hmm. on the canvas of Christendom. That's what it is. Yeah. Yet if you say something like this, someone say, hey, you got to be more patient. Got to be more patient. I've been patient for 60 years. 
the people of God have been patient. They've been too patient. And God has been blasphemed because of this condition. Christ has been demeaned and people don't want to become a Christian because this kind of stuff is going on. So no, it should not be. We should not apologize. There's one spirit. Well, exactly what does the spirit do? Well, these are known things, but it's just good to, good to go over them. You've been sealed with the spirit of God until the day of redemption, meaning whatever he's doing, he's going to do up until that time. The issue is whether he does it among us or not. He's a witness to those given to those who obey Christ. He's a minister of comfort. Acts 9.31 says, Comfort the Holy Spirit. He gives commissions. There at Antioch when they were praying, remember and fasting, ministering to the Lord, the Holy Spirit said, Separate Barnabas to a work I'm, I'm sent. See, the Holy Spirit commissions things to be done. He's an administrator operating under God and Christ. He makes chosen men overseers over the church. Feed the flock of God over which the Holy Spirit made you overseers. Yeah. Amen. Well, most of the elders, listen now. Mm -hmm. Most of the elders I've confronted, I can tell you right up front, the Holy Spirit did not make those men overseers. Right. No person who's not made an overseer by the Holy Spirit is really an elder. Yeah, that's right. It's just a term that's fixed on them, and they all ought to be fired and kicked yeah. out. I proposed that when I first came here and we really raised the higher people. I said, I would like to propose that all ministers and all elders be purged from the church and we level the playing field and start over from scratch. And then any of them that were good, we could bring them in. Well, boy, I really caused a lot of effects, let's put it that way. So the Holy Spirit... One spirit, one spirit does this. Yeah. He sheds the love of broad, love of God abroad in the hearts of the people. Uh -huh. He shows them the love of God, and when they begin to see it, they commence loving God. They'll do anything for God. They'll yeah. die for God. They'll run for God. They'll do anything for God because they love Him because they see that He loved them. Yeah. Uh -huh. Holy Spirit brings that awareness. Yeah. The Holy Spirit leads us in subduing the deeds of the body. Yeah, right. yeah. Through the Spirit, we mortify the deeds of the body. He shows us how to do it. Mm -hmm. So here's someone, they just keep on falling and stumbling and committing the same sin. And oh, I, I'm sorry, but I had another child out of wedlock. I'm, mm -hmm. What's wrong? Mm -hmm. The appointed guide yeah. isn't in the place. Because yeah. that's what he does. Amen. He directs people on how to say no and subdue the deeds of the body. And he uh, he intercedes in areas that we don't know what to pray for as we ought. At a certain point in time, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things you need from God. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't know what they are. But you got to have them to survive. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit says, I'll take it from here. Yeah. And he intercedes for you. And groanings that can't be uttered, mm -hmm. just so your pride won't be built up any... And he intercedes for it, and God gives it to you because he knows the mind of the Spirit. Because the Spirit searches the deep things of God. So the Holy Spirit searches all oh, this. This is what's needed here, Father. Brother Given needs this. So I get it because the Holy Spirit. Yes. That's what he does. So this one Spirit. So if he's not, if he's not in the body there, you don't get this. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And the Holy Spirit, he produces righteousness, peace, and joy. So you can abound in hope. He's what produces this. And he, he gives you all joy and peace in believing, so you can abound in, in, in hope. He teaches men proper words, words that the Holy Spirit teaches. He teaches them how to say things right. Yeah. And he, he washes, sanctifies, and justifies. That 1 Corinthians 6.11. And he changes us from one stage of glory to another. And he enables the believer to wait, <laughs> wait for the hope of righteousness. See? None of us are content with where we're at. 
If that we're not discontent with God, we know we got a way to go. Yes, Brother Gene said we're we may be mature, but we're still we're we're still advancing. Amen. We're willing to wait for the per, for the perfection of this whole thing, mm -hmm. working out our own salvation, fear and trembling. In the meantime, Holy Spirit teaches us to do that. He leads people to speak profitably, a word of wisdom, word of knowledge, so forth. He produces fruit that glorifies God, the fruit of the Spirit. He, yeah. He's the one that does that, mm -hmm. produces that fruit. He inhabit, God inhabits the church through the Spirit. He enables the believer to keep what's been given to him, that which you've received, keep by the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. Paul said. He, yeah. he enables you to keep what you, what you got from God. He moves men to obey the truth. By the Holy Spirit, you, you obeyed the truth through the Holy Spirit, Amen. Peter said. And he enables you to love the brethren with an unfeigned love. Yeah. And he confirms that Christ abides in us. These are just some things that the Holy Spirit does. See, there's, one, there's only one Spirit that does this. Amen. No man's Spirit can do this. Yeah. None at all. So there's the one spirit indispensable to the proper functioning of the body. So it is that everyone tries to seek their own special spirit, so to speak. No, there's one spirit. That's all. But if that spirit is quenched yeah. or grieved, you forfeit everything. Mm -hmm. I say everything yeah. that he does. Amen. Because there's only one spirit. No one, no other personality can do what he's, what I just told you about there. I think there's about 21 things there. Only he does it. So there's one spirit. See, so now we know where to go for our resources. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Now this one, this is unity talk now. You're called in one hope of your calling. Other versions say, call to one hope when you were called. Call to the one hope that belongs to your call. The one hope of his purpose for you. One hope of your vocation, so forth. In other words, when God called you, he called you to something as well as from something. He called you out from the world. He called you to a hope. There's an objective there's a reason why God called you. It wasn't just to forgive your sins. Mm -hmm. that, that has to be done before we can proceed with the work. Yeah. Before God can proceed with the work on the people, this sin thing's got to be settled. Yeah. Uh -huh. And Christ provided a just basis mm -hmm. for God to wipe it away and cleanse it, purge it. Now we can get on with the, with the work. There's one hope. What is hope? Well, hope is mentioned 48 times in the epistles. Hope is mentioned here. 48 times in the epistles. It always points to the future. You never hope for the past. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, hope never goes backwards. Yeah. Hope's always forwards. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's like an objective or a purpose. It's why God does something. Paul already told him, and I've been praying for you, that the eyes of your understanding be opened up so you'd know the hope of your calling. That's what he's talking about. <laughs> I think he's talking about here. In other words, so you'd know why God called you. Uh -huh. He didn't call you just to straighten out yeah. some of the difficulties you had here. Yeah. That's not why he calls you. One hope. There's just one hope. There's just one reason. There's just one reason uh -huh. why, why we've been called. The person whose desire is to be a friend of the world is, an, is the Enemy of God, James 4.4. 4. Why? Because the closer you are to the world, the less apt hope. Yeah. Hope can't exist in that. With your head pinned to the earth, hope can't exist. Yeah. People who are thinking about this world don't think about glory. They don't, they don't think about Christ coming or being made perfect or being forever with the Lord or reigning with Jesus. <laughs> this isn't what you think about mm -hmm. when you're immersed in the world. See? There's one who called you in one hope. So if you, don't, if you don't set your eye on this, there's no reason for you even to be a Christian. Yeah, that's right. There's no reason. There's no reason for you to be saved at all. Yeah. Uh -huh. If your interest isn't in the world to come. Uh -huh. That's the hope of his calling. Amen. In other words, he had to, 
this sin has created such a condition it takes a lifetime to get you ready for there. That's how much damage sin has done. One hope of your calling. Your salvation, of course, is not complete. It's ready to be revealed, as Peter said, but it's you just tasted the first fruits, that's all. Hope says the work will be completed. This to say will be completed. I'm I'm not gonna always be in this condition, praise God. And the and the hope of that keeps you keeps you going. Amen. Praise God. It's is, is good, isn't it? <laughs> See, we were made complete. The last thing that's got to be changed, our body. That, mm -hmm. So if you ever wonder whether you're 100% saved, just remember your body. Yes. You've got walking evidence right with you there. Every day you go to bed with it, wake up with it. This thing isn't saved yet. Yeah. But it's going to be. Yes. Amen. We're going to experience the redemption of our body. Yes. And until then, he's purchased it. It's called a purchase position. So he's bought your body so he can help you sanctify it and keep it in control until you get a new body. Because if you haven't learned to live for God in this body, what good would it do to have you have a new body? What good would that do? Going to move into your new house someday and that salvation is getting you... Ready. One hope. There's one hope. See, there's only one hope if you're calling. Not five or six. One hope. That's all. One. That's all. One. Salvation prepares you for your immortal body. For the same reason he has wrought us. He made us to fit in that body. <laughs> well, I think you imagine the liberty and the joy when you, when you put on immortality. Well, oh, I'll tell you, the freedom you'll feel, you're just like sore, boy. Yes, right. Such freedom we never had before. Yeah. You can live with that hope will sustain you. Why will it? Because it's a real hope. That's right. See, you can't, be, you can't be sustained by an imagination or a myth or a fable. Yeah. This is a real hope. In fact, Christ is called our hope, so the hope is embodied in Christ. Your hope is as real as Jesus is. Amen. One hope. It's not that hope. Hope isn't fully realized in inhabiting our bodies. That's just the commencement <laughs> of the thing. We're going to ever be with the Lord. Now, there's only one hope. That's what our text affirms. And it has to do with after the world's passed away. It's referred to as the hope of your calling or the reason why God called you. So God called you to speak crudely to go to heaven. That's why God called you. But another way, he called you into a journey. It's ending up in another country, yeah. a better country that is a heavenly. He's called, he's called you into this. Into this, there's an entourage traveling along on this highway of holiness, and he's called you to join them. Yeah. Join in with them. Come to the celestial city. This hope is generated by the gospel. In fact, it's called the hope of the gospel. Colossians 1.23. Well, but what if the gospel isn't preached? Then you don't have hope. Because yes. the gospel generates the generates the hopes. You can tell people things will be better, you can do better, things will be okay, it'll all work out of the end. That won't enable a person to live by hope. Yeah. you got to tell them what's on the other side. Yeah. Hope of the gospel. So see, I, I can tell when people are hopeless, one or two conditions exist. Either they have not heard the gospel, or they've heard it and rejected it. Yeah. It's I don't know what I can't think of any other reason. Can you, Brother Gene, think of any other reason why that circumstance exists? Galatians 5 5 says, We through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness. One lady, she got it from someone else, I'm sure, but she used to testify, a black lady at a church that I used to minister at. She said, uh, I'm not what I was. And I'm not what I want. I'm not what I want to be. 
I'm not what I ought to be. I'm not what I shall be, but by the grace of God, I'm not what I was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're in Christ, that's you can say. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means you've made some progress. <laughs> that's what it means. You've made some progress. Our hearts purified by faith, we have a longing for purity. Amen. See, when your hearts are pure, it affects how you think you want to be pure. Because there's something about really feeling spiritually clean that you want. It's a great, it's a great feeling. Yes, amen. When your sins are gone and they're remitted, you're just clean. You just, I mean, you, it both of have experience, you know what I'm talking about, but that'll sustain you. You have this hope arise, you're willing to wait. I'm willing to wait for, the, for this to be permanentized. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And for the child of God, there's no other hope now. You, you can't hold anything else. You can't hold anything else out to him yeah. that will sustain him. There's only one hope. And where this hope doesn't exist, well, you've got a bad situation. Now, Paul, he's beginning this discourse on the functionality of the church because he's going to deal in this chapter on how the church functions and why it functions in a certain way. But he's laying out the groundwork here about the resources you got to work with. Mm -hmm. That God has created his people and gathered them together and given them resources that will produce the end that he wants. Yeah. Amen. You take advantage of the resources mm -hmm. which are ministered to you by various members of the body of Christ and throughout your lifetime, if you take advantage of them, you'll be, you'll be when Jesus comes again, you'll be ready. Mm -hmm. You'll be ready. Amen. It's all tailored to work that way. Amen. I think I'll close there. But any of you have something you'd like to add tonight? Yeah, I was thinking this as you were speaking there that only God could could <clears throat> manufacture or, or make a way that he could take somebody that's totally defiled, totally yeah. alienated from him, yeah. and yet provide all the resources, and not just the resources, the actual animating spirit that's to right. get the work done in you. The, a work right. that you didn't even know what he wanted when you started that's out. You right. didn't have any clue. And yet now, to yeah. some degree, you know, you, in that. fact, you have a love yeah. for the things that you once didn't know yeah. anything about. And the only God could do this in the end then, because you stand and you see glory and you see what he's produced, you say, well, well, you'll say, well done. Yeah. You'll know what you were before. That's right. You know the, the, all the, 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 the darkness that was once in you. It's, he's purging it out and he's doing it in such a marvelous way. You actually, you anticipate the next, right. the next level that you, you're going to. This only God could do this. And so, but the fact that this testimony is in you is your token that God's, right. God's bringing you to glory. Mm -hmm. He's doing it. I've heard people, preachers say this so more times than I like to acknowledge about being surprised when you get to heaven and see it all, just, whoa, whoa wow. That isn't going to be the way it's going to be at all. Uh -huh. You're going to say, this is what I wanted. Amen. Amen. But here you're not, you're not able to yeah. fully state the case. Mm -hmm. But when you see what God prepared you for, you'll, you'll, this, this is exactly yeah. what yeah. I wanted. Right. Yeah. And whoever gets to say that gets to stay. Yeah. And what I need. What I need, right. amen. What I longed for. Yeah. What I longed for. That's right. Expected. That's what I expected. What, yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. See, and whoever is surprised when they get to, when they stand at the day of judgment, what they see, that they, they aren't going to get to stay. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is true. I'm telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. All right, anyone else have something they'd like to say? Yeah, Brother Ricky. I appreciate what you said, that a person cannot be sustained by something that's not real, that doesn't have substance yes. to it. Mm -hmm. The opposite is true, too, and this is a great testimony to the substance and reality of our hope that we're being sustained by it. Yeah. We're tasting of the powers mm -hmm. of the world to come. Mm. The very fact that our longing for anticipate, our longing for heaven has not been turned aside by the things of the earth, because this is where we're working out our salvation is on the earth. Mm -hmm. Shows forth the great superiority mm. of what we have seen and the reality of these Amen. things. Amen. Mm -hmm.
You and you're willing to pay the price, we know you've seen the sight. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. You don't have to tell us, we yeah. know. Uh -huh. If you're not willing to pay the price, we know you haven't seen it. So we're going to try and help you see it. Yes. See, we know the effects. We know the effects of spiritual vision. We know by experience. And when you see what God has said, or well, the eyes of your understanding or heart are opened up, uh -huh. yeah. then pursuing it, you don't have to be exhorted <laughs> continually. Uh -huh. You want it. Amen. Anyone else? <laughs> All right, let's have a word of prayer. We are for this great salvation. We can see how gloriously it all blends together and fits together, and we give you praise for it, Father. We're looking forward to the time when we will be like our Lord, and we shall see him as he is. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.